our daily Bible reading for February 3rd. Our reading today comes from the Gospel of Matthew, chapter 19. Matthew, chapter 19, we'll begin reading in verse 1. Now when Jesus had finished these sayings, He went away from Galilee and entered the region of Judea beyond the Jordan. And large crowds followed Him, and He healed them there. And Pharisees came up to Him and tested Him by asking, Is it lawful to divorce one's wife for any cause? He answered, Have you not read that He who created them from the beginning made them male and female, and said, Therefore a man shall leave his father and his mother and hold fast to his wife, and the two shall become one flesh. So they are no longer two, but one flesh. What therefore God has joined together, let not man separate. They said to him, Why then did Moses command one to give a certificate of divorce and to send her away? He said to them, Because of your hardness of heart, Moses allowed you to divorce your wives. But from the beginning it was not so. And I say to you, Whoever divorces his wife, except for sexual immorality, and marries another, commits adultery. The disciples said to him, If such is the case of a man with his wife, it is better not to marry. But he said to them, Not everyone can receive this saying, but only those to whom it is given. For there are eunuchs who have been so from birth, and there are eunuchs who have been made eunuchs by men, and there are eunuchs who have made themselves eunuchs for the sake of the kingdom of heaven. Let the one who is able to receive this, receive it. Then children were brought to him, that he might lay his hands on them and pray. The disciples rebuked the people. But Jesus said, Let the little children come to me, and do not hinder them, for such belongs the kingdom of heaven. And he laid his hands on them and went away. And behold, a man came up to him, saying, Teacher, what good deed must I do to inherit eternal life? And he said to him, Why do you ask me about what is good? There is only one who is good. If you would enter life, keep the commandments. He said to him, Which ones? And Jesus said, You shall not murder, you shall not commit adultery, you shall not steal, you shall not bear false witness, honor your father and mother, and you shall love your neighbor as yourself. The young man said to him, All these I have kept. What do I still lack? Jesus said to him, If you would be perfect, go. Sell what you possess and give to the poor, and you will have treasure in heaven. And come, follow me. When the young man heard this, he went away sorrowful, for he had great possessions. And Jesus said to his disciples, Truly I say to you, only with difficulty will a rich person enter the kingdom of heaven. And again, I tell you, it is easier for a camel to go through the eye of a needle than for a rich person to enter the kingdom of God. When the disciples heard this, they were greatly astonished, saying, who then can be saved? But Jesus looked at them and said, With man this is impossible, but with God all things are possible. Then Peter said in reply, See, we have left everything and followed you. What then will we have? And Jesus said to them, Truly I say to you, in the new world, when the Son of Man will sit on His glorious throne, you who have followed Me will also sit on twelve thrones, judging the twelve tribes of Israel. And everyone who has left houses, or brothers, sisters, or fathers, or mother, or children, or lands, for my name's sake, will receive a hundredfold, and will inherit eternal life. But many who are first will be last, and the last first. A few thoughts for today. In all of life, one of the most painful experiences one can have is that of divorce. We all know that life must come to an end in death. We can endure this even though it is painful. Yet when wedding vows are exchanged, no provision is made for an end except death. Who goes into the ceremony with the idea that it will end by our own hands? Yet divorce is a reality far too common in our society today. What statistic have you not heard? What pain have you not seen for yourselves? Who among us has not been affected by this horrific plague in our families? Given the choice, who would choose this over happiness and reconciliation? The question the Pharisees pose is a legitimate one. If God didn't want a husband and wife to divorce, why did He make provisions for it in the law? From the beginning of God's relationship with the Israelites in the wilderness, it was apparent that they were a stiff-necked and hard-hearted people. We read
read in Exodus 32, 9. And the Lord said to Moses, I have seen this people, and behold, they are an obstinate people. Over and over, God's children would be labeled this way. Take some time and read Exodus 33, 3, or Exodus 33, 5, or 34, verse 9. Deuteronomy chapter 9 and verse 6, or Deuteronomy 9, verse 13. Deuteronomy 10, 16. Deuteronomy 31, 27. 2 Chronicles 30, verse 8. Nehemiah 9, verse 17. Psalm 78, 8. Proverbs 29, 1. Isaiah 48, 4. Zechariah 7, 11 through 12. Acts 7, 51. You get the idea that God has said it over and over of this people. Jesus does not go beyond this explanation of the Israelites, but he does go back to the beginning, to the original intent of the bond of marriage. In its essence, marriage was and is designed for life. In an imperfect world, this is a perfect union. Why? Because humans are human, and as such, are hard-hearted and subject to erring. We could try to explain all the variables that go into the breakdown of marriage, the socioeconomic pressures, the influence of forces determined to undermine its foundation, and on and on it goes. But when all is said and done, we are left with the hardness of hearts. Good intentions are sometimes not enough. There was no provision by God to supersede marriage. There was no alternative in the beginning. God created the perfect union and nothing we can do will improve upon what God has designed for a man and a woman. That being said, what are we prepared to do to teach and guide a culture bent on self-destruction in marriage? It's not an easy issue with so many touched by its devastating effects. We must never forget that God loves everyone. and To that end, we must reach out to those who are hurting in the midst of divorce, not with a condemning finger wagging at them, but with open arms and forgiveness. Remember the words of Jesus. But go and learn what this means. I desire compassion, not sacrifice. For I did not come to call the righteous, but sinners. Matthew chapter 9 and verse 13. A question of the day. Have you ever been guilty of treating someone who is divorced as a second-class citizen? And finally, a thought for today. Can you think of a way to bring in those who have been hurt by divorce to the family of God? Those are our thoughts for today, February 3rd.